All right, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Free. I'm Ryan. I'm the pastor here again another Saturday night, and it's so good to be with you all. If you're joining us for the first time, welcome. If you just stumbled upon this live feed, you're not here by accident, so tune in, stick around, pay attention. Uh, We're glad you're here. This community free is for addicts and loved ones of addicts and spiritual refugees. And what we like to do here is break the silence of addiction and create space for healing, recovery, and spiritual connection. And if you're wondering why this place is called free, why these people are called free, it is because all the things that set us free, grace, compassion, love, forgiveness, all of these things are so freely given by God. And that's what we're doing here tonight. We're free, you're free. All right, y'all, a lot is happening. I want to throw things over to Jess Norwood. She is a a sober chick. Uh, And I say that because that's her blog. She has a Facebook page, A Sober Chick. She vlogs there, blogs there. Am I saying it right? Blog and blog? Blog, vlogs, videos, however however y'all do it these days. You kids do it these days. Anyway, I want to throw it over to Jess. Tell us what's happening here at Free. Well, first of all, I'm so grateful you're here. I'm grateful to our free community, um, all of you that are joining us. Um, And I want to throw a big, huge thank you to everybody that came. I think it was Wednesday for our um, free gifts. People brought donations of socks, underwear, bras, clean ones, Mm -hmm. new, fresh ones. Um, And we were also able to collect $1,500 to donate back to um, Ready for Work. Yes. Um, So thank you all for doing that. I also want to remind everybody to um, download our app, Free Spiritual Community. On there you're going to find the list of our meetings, um, a little description of each of them. Um, And when we're meeting in person, because we are doing that here at Free, um, we're wearing our masks. And also on our app you'll find a place where you can give back to Free um, monetarily. Um, you'll find all that information on there. And I also wanted to talk about a little bit Tammy's new baby, Wagon Coffee. That's available for purchase as well, um, $22, and that's taxes everything. And that all goes back into um, Tammy is uh, Women in Recovery. Yes, giving jobs back to women um, in recovery. Woo-hoo! So I think that's all I have. Thank you, Jess. It's good to have you here this evening. Glad you're here. And a few other things I want you all to know about, just because uh, some of y'all like to know what's coming up in the upcoming weeks, not just next week, but the weeks to come. So I want to let you know what's happening on Saturdays. So tonight we have Matt Naraki in the house. He's our guest storyteller. We're going to have a uh, a fascinating conversation in just a bit. Um, Next week, so we're in this two-week series of Rooted. How do we stay rooted when times are really uncertain? What are we rooted in? Next week, Duke Rumley is going to be in the house. He's the founder of Sober AF Entertainment. And then that following week, which is uh, August 8th, that's a Saturday, we're taking a rest week. We've been going hard and fast. Maybe you've been going hard and fast. We're taking a rest week. That means we're not going to be live. We're not creating content that week. We're going to rest in this culture Sometimes we need to model what rest looks like and you truly can take a break. It's a reminder that you don't have to do it all. We can rest. So that's in two weeks. And then after that, we're starting this series called Shadows. We're going to address things like relapse. Uh, We're going to address things like what are the things that keep us living in shame and uh, all, all the unhealthy things, the darkness, the shadows. What are the shadows in life that hold us back? That's going to be a three week series. And then guess what, y'all? It's Labor Day. September 5th, Labor Day weekend. Uh, We've got some plans for that Saturday night. I'm not going to tell y'all yet because we don't have all the details, but it's going to be awesome. So stay tuned. We'll have some more info next week. Anyway, that's the rundown for the next few weeks. If you've got questions, let me know. Here's what else I want to let y'all know about. We launched our free circles video last week. And so we want to play just a segment of that video. Some of you all have reached out to us. We had a meeting with a couple this week uh, down south, and some amazing things are going to happen from that. I feel it. If y'all are watching tonight, you know who I'm talking to. Uh, I'm talking with someone else from California tomorrow. I hope tomorrow we were supposed to talk today, but anyway, maybe that's going to happen tomorrow. Um, I want y'all to see just part of this video because so many of you are asking, how do we start a free thing right here where I live? So, 
take a look at two minutes of the four minute video. If you want the full video, you can scroll through our Facebook page, send me a message, I'll send you the whole video, but it's addressing how to start a free circle, a community right where you are. Take a look. We wanna keep this simple. Here's what we need from you. One, create a list of people. Reach out to them personally and ask them to journey with you. This is your circle. Two, meet on a regular basis. And we're gonna ask you to commit to this project for at least six months. Now your circle might decide to meet weekly or bi-weekly or even monthly, whatever it is, commit to it. And the third thing, the goal of your free circle is to build intentional spiritual community based on the mission of free, which is breaking the silence of addiction while creating space for healing, recovery, and spiritual connection. Now here's what you can expect from us. One, a weekly Saturday streamed service that allows you to gather with your circle and engage creative and relevant content to bring about a deeper sense of community, all working together towards the common goal. And a second thing, for those of you that wanna go deeper, deeper in your relationship with God and self and other people, we will be providing a weekly free circles video message from me. And this video will include a short message and discussion questions for your free circle. Now, how you wanna use this content is completely up to you. Maybe your circle engages it for 10 minutes and spends the rest of the time hiking or biking or serving other people, whatever it is or maybe you just wanna hang out in your living room and engage this content for hours upon hours. The point is you decide what works best for you and your free circle. And the third thing, we will host a monthly Zoom meeting with you, myself, and other key leaders in our free community to address any of your questions or concerns. We want to join with you in the excitement. We will pour into you and we will be a resource for you. And it's really important for you to know Free circles should always hold our core values of no shame and no BS. These circles are the places where you go deeper with your people, your tribe, your circle. If this interests you, if you're saying to yourself right now, man, I wanna step up, well, shoot me an email, let's talk. We were built for community. Community sustains us to rise together, to thrive together. All right, if you just watch that and you're thinking to yourself, man, I, I feel called to this. Something, something is in me. I, I, I want to see what this is about. Shoot me a text. Just because you text me doesn't mean you're committing to anything. We could just have a conversation and see if you want to move forward with it. 303-944-5061. That's my cell phone. Shoot me a text. Don't wait. Do it right now. Someone was asking, how do we find our circle? Who are the people you want to journey with? So when you look out into your world, who are the people that you say, yeah, I'll I want to journey with them. I want them to be in this circle. I want to, I want to do the circle thing together. Who are those people? Make a list, then reach out to them. Uh, if you're interested, like I said, let's talk. Text me 303-944-5061. All right, y'all. And if you have more questions, you can always shoot us an email. Get in touch with us here. Uh, we are happy to talk more about free circles. And it doesn't matter where you live. Uh, here, over there, wherever. Uh, we'd be happy to talk. Uh, you know what? We're going to be talking about that. And that's that's worth saying. Some of you have asked, what about local? If we if you live here in Denver, we are meeting with a group of people tomorrow, our home team, and we will have local groups. We don't know what we're calling them yet, but we'll get there. So if you're interested in that too, of hosting a local group, let me know. Let someone on our team know. Drop a line in the comments. All right, and you'll be hearing more from us each week about this because we want to launch some of these groups starting in the fall, September-ish. All right, shall we move into some celebrations? Sure. It's how we start in this community. We, we lift up all of our joys, the good things that's happening in life, the sobriety anniversaries, the birthdays, the uh, wedding anniversaries, the babies being born or about to be born. Uh, we lift these things up. We celebrate them together. God celebrates with us. And I think God loves to hear from us when it comes to these things. 
So y'all know the drill. If you're if you've been with us before, you're gonna have two minutes. You're gonna see the dancing. What is it? A dancing snowman tonight? Yep. A yeti. Yep. A dancing yeti on the screen. You're gonna have two minutes. Get vulnerable. Let people in on your celebrations so we can celebrate together as a community, as a body of people. Let other people in on your celebrations. Take two minutes, and then Tammy and I are going to come sit with y'all and read some of these celebrations so that we can celebrate with you. This is like my favorite part of the evening. So two minutes. Give us your joy. Go. All right, welcome back, everybody. Let's get some of these celebrations. Alexis, I got your message. You want to be part of a free circle? Yes, I'm going to reach out to you. We'll talk. It's going to be awesome. Others of you, text me or give us a comment below. I'll take it. You want to go? Yeah. You want to start? Yep. Hey, Allisons. John and I are celebrating 35 years together. That's a long time. We are healthy. Oh, what? yep. What? We're still celebrating. Okay, good. We are healthy and enjoying a view of Lake Dillon while we watch Bree. All love right. We love y'all too. Yeah, so glad you guys are joining us from Dillon, Lake Dillon. Congratulations. I think we have other friends celebrating. Leslie and John, yeah? Yeah. Leslie yeah. and John, they did. Are they on? Maybe I know they're they celebrating, celebrating down here too, but yes, congratulations. Jess says, just got my four-year chip. You all just saw Jess. She's celebra celebrating four years yes, sobriety. Jess. Way to go, Woo. Jess. Woo. Woo. Tina Mercer went camping with my boys for five days. So good for the soul. Yeah. So glad you were able to do that. That's awesome. Congrats. Gina says celebrated 16 years one. of marriage. People must like to get married in July. Yeah. That's Congratulations, guys. 16 years. Way to go. Brian, I've been able to work through COVID. In fact, got a promotion and a, a pause raise. Wow. Cool. Very good. Congrats, Brian. Way to go, brother. Pamela says, I spent the entire day with two great communities. It always lifts me up. Good to see you earlier yeah. today, Pamela. It was good to see you. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Debbie, celebrating my beautiful new home and apartment. All right. Very good. Congrats, Debbie. I would love to see pictures. Will you please send some to me? Very cool. Shannon Martinez says, celebrated five-year anniversary. Can't Yay. believe he put up with me for that long. Now, the real miracle is you put up with him That's right. for five years. <laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> All right. Congratulations, guys. Uh, Lots of anniversaries. Yeah. Oh, another from Gina. Our friend Mike came out of brain surgery pretty well, but now has to fight cancer. Oh, my gosh. All right. Well, celebrating and prayers. Yeah. They often go hand in hand, yeah? Yeah, they do. Um, Alexa says, I have been free of smoking weed for two months. I never thought I would be free 
I'm not sober from all substances, but it's a start. Dang right, it's a start. Yeah, Thanks for sharing yeah. that, Alexis. One of the things I love about this community is you can actually share that here. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I don't know if you could do that in other churches. Maybe you could. I don't know. But in this church, you can share that. That's what we do. And there's no shame, no judgment. We're going to love you. So keep going. Yeah. Oh, wait. Um, go back, Drew. I think she was just saying, hey. Hey, Stevie. Oh, hi. <laughs> he. <laughs> <laughs> Cindy, Cindy, a great breakfast conversation with Austin. Ah, oh, that's awesome. good. Very good. Thanks for sharing that with us, Cindy. Yeah. Kat says, grateful for the rain that we so desperately needed in Southern Colorado and for being here at Free tonight. We're glad you're here, Kat. And it rained here yeah. as well. I think it's still raining. I know. I feel it. It's, it's humid. It's humid. It's humid in Your Colorado. Your hair might be getting curly. I feel like it is like frizzing out a little bit. Stevie <laughs> wants to celebrate my frosted tips. <laughs> You know what? We're gonna lift that up. Let's all lift that up together. Oh, oh my! Stevie, you and I could we we could you could do it with me, man. It's not too late. <laughs> I love it. Thank you for that. Oh Last my. one from Jim. Chocolate Lisa is on the mend from protracted dental surgery complications. That is good to hear. Glad that she's doing better. Right, one more. Yes. One more. She okay. had a birthday this week, didn't she, Lisa? I think so. Happy birthday, yeah. Lisa. Happy birthday, Lisa. Glad you're feeling better. Hope you had some chocolate and some Shreffneys. MJ said my friend and his uh, fiance survived COVID. Uh, Good. Yeah. Congratulations to them and thanks for sharing that with us. Yeah, that's a big, big thing. Thanks Very for good. sharing. I'm going to step out of your All small right. circle here. Thank you for joining yeah, me. Yeah, thanks for letting me celebrate. Do you want to take your stool with you too so I can scooch? scooch. All right, y'all. So fun to celebrate with you. Just because. this stuff and i think it's going to be fascinating so here's a little rooted video to kick us off all right how do you stay rooted when it feels like you are being completely uprooted. The world looks and feels vastly different now from when it did just four months ago, doesn't it? And I don't know about y'all, but I've noticed this kind of second wave of frustration and wind being taken from the sails just recently. Like so many of us thought there might be some sense of normalcy by August or by the fall that kids would go back to school, that jobs would resume, vacations might even happen. And it's like things are still just as uncertain as they were a few months back. Does it feel a bit uprooting? During this time, everything has become overly politicized. And if you see things differently than I do, well, then you're just the enemy. We've stopped listening to one another. Because when you're talking, I've got to be thinking about and worrying about what I'm going to say next rather than listening to you. I've got to put being right above being in relationship with you. And during a time when we should be coming together, we're dividing families, friends, communities. I'm sure you've seen some of the same conversations on social media that I've seen. Maybe you've even engaged in these arguments and debates. Yeah, does it feel a bit uprooting? And does it feel like you've lost a really important piece of human connection? A buddy of mine just got back from a multi-day multi hiking trip in the mountains, and he was telling me that when he would pass fellow hikers on the trail, many of them uh, uh, not only stepped off the trail while they were passing, but with masks on, they would stop, step off the trail, and turn their backs. No eye contact. No hellos, no connection. And you may have felt this in grocery stores, parks, hospitals, wherever you hang out. And many of you are aware of some of the very real consequences of disconnection and isolation. 
we're seeing it now. We, we've talked about it for several weeks, the, the rise of depression, relapse, loneliness. And for some of you, you're saying to yourself, man, the most important things have been taken from me. Does it all feel a bit uprooting? And how do you stay rooted when it feels like you're being completely uprooted? See, I think the first Psalm addresses this question. And I want to spend just a couple of minutes with you in this psalm. And I know I've talked with you all about the psalms many times before. They're an ancient collection of poems and prayers found in the Old Testament, right in the middle of your Bible. If you were to open your Bible to the middle, you're likely to uh, open to the psalms. And the psalms have many different authors, and we refer to them as the psalmists. Now, the psalmist in the first psalm uses the language of being like trees planted by streams of water. But see, the problem becomes, how do you remain a tree? How do you remain rooted when it feels like you're being uprooted? Now, Psalm 1 is referred to as a psalm of orientation. And psalms of orientation ask us this question, to whom and to what are we orienting our lives? So as we engage the question about what keeps us rooted, let us keep the overarching question at the forefront, to whom and to what are we orienting our lives? So Psalm 1, just the first three verses of Psalm 1, it reads like this. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or take the path that sinners tread or sit in a seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither, and all they do they prosper. By the way, that word planted, in the Hebrew it's better translated as transplanted. Hold on to that. Now here's what's interesting. In the past 2,500 years or so after this psalm was written, guess what? We are still talking about happiness. In fact, did you know there's now an academic discipline within academic studies called happiness studies? We're still talking about what does it look like to be happy within the social sciences. And it's blowing up. There's now even a peer-reviewed journal of happiness studies. In recent years, the most popular class at Harvard University was a course on happiness, how to be happy. And here in the first Psalm, we see themes of happiness and trees and being rooted. Now let's go a little deeper. Why was the psalmist talking about these themes here? We need some backstory, don't we? 587 BCE, a very significant historical event the Babylonians came into Jerusalem, ransacked the city, destroyed the temple, took the Hebrew people out of their land and brought them into a foreign land in Babylon where they were now living in captivity. Now, if you're among the Hebrew people living in ancient Israel, living in Jerusalem, what's the most important thing, the thing that keeps you rooted? The temple. It was the center of life for them. It was where the people went to meet and to be with God. It was everything to them. And what the Babylonians do? Completely destroyed it. What's the most important practice? The thing that keeps you rooted if you're a Hebrew living in ancient Israel? Sabbath. Remember the story? And on the seventh day, God rested. And so you shall rest too. And now they're living in Babylon, a foreign land being held in slavery, forced labor seven days a week in the foreign land of Babylon. No temple, no practice of Sabbath. Things had been taken from them. Life looked very different in Babylon. Now, I want you to imagine with me for a moment. You are living in this land of exile, and this poem comes along written by one of your own, one of your own people. And can you imagine the anxiety in reading a poem that starts with happy are those? I mean, can you imagine? Oh, oh, you want to talk about being happy? Come on, man. Have you forgotten what happened? You were there. They raped our women. They abused our children. They destroyed the temple. 
And now look where we are living in Babylon. We can't even be who we are. We can't even observe the Sabbath. And you want to talk about happiness? And can you hear the psalmist respond? Yeah, we're going to talk about happiness. Who are the happy? The psalmist says, their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. By the way, what is the law? We have to be a bit careful here. We can't assume it's a list of rules and regulations to follow, and if you follow them, you're going to get God's favor. But the law here is the Torah, their scriptures, their story. What we now know is the first five books of the Old Testament. Now, one of the central stories in the law, the Torah, we talked about this a few weeks ago, Moses, central story, Moses, going back to the book of Exodus. The Israelites, remember, they were being held in slavery in Egypt under the leadership of Pharaoh, and Moses experiences God in a burning bush. God calls Moses to go to Pharaoh and tell him to let the people go. Moses was reluctant, but ultimately ends up going, and he leads the people out of slavery towards the promised land. And the text tells us in Exodus chapter 3 that God saw them, heard their cries, and that God has come to rescue them. You see, is it possible that when the psalmist is speaking to his people in exile in Babylon, he's saying to them, remember your story. Remember who God is. The God who heard your cries, meditate on these things day and night. Tell this story to your kids. Because when you do this, when you orient your life around this story, around this God, you will be like trees transplanted, replanted by streams of water. Now hang with me for just one more historical moment because we're going somewhere. Where did the psalmist get this image? Did he just pull it out of the sky? No, he's borrowing from one of his colleagues. There's a book in the Old Testament called Ezekiel. And Ezekiel was a religious leader who became a spokesperson for God during the Babylonian exile. And Ezekiel is given this vision where an angel takes him on a tour of, uh, of the new temple, a new city, a new land where God dwells. And here's how he describes the vision in chapter 47 of Ezekiel. I'll just read a couple of lines. When he brought me back to the temple's entrance, remember this is a vision, I noticed that water was flowing toward the east from under the temple's threshold. But on both banks of the river will grow up all kinds of fruit-bearing trees. Their leaves won't wither and their fruitfulness won't wane. They will produce fruit in every month because their water comes from the sanctuary, the place of God. Their fruit will be for eating their leaves for healing. Ezekiel is describing this life-giving stream of water that flows from the temple and the streams that surround this. Psalm 1, no, I'm sorry, not the streams, the trees that surround this, this stream, but Psalm 1 borrows this image. And what's he saying? When you remember who you are, when you remember who God is, when you do the practices that help you remember, when you meditate on these things, it will be like being brought back, transplanted to the place where you experience the fullest kind of life. Because as I said a few weeks ago, happiness, joy, transcends circumstances. You you can be there but not really there, you can be somewhere else. In other words, you can be rooted even though you've been uprooted. And in the Psalm, he pushes the image even further. You, he says, you will be like these trees because God's mission is always about healing and rescuing and serving others, bearing fruit, not withering, but staying firmly rooted, leaves of healing. And do you see how this opening image in the first Psalm has profound implications for us today. Yeah, does it feel like you've been a bit uprooted? Can't you hear the psalmist saying to us, God heard their cries and God hears your cries. 
This is still central to the story. And when you remember your story, when you practice the remembering of who God is, prayer, meditation, extending the hand to a brother or sister in need, loving one another, acting in compassion, you will remain rooted in the God who gives you life. You will remain rooted in something far greater and bigger than yourself. You will be like these trees. And not only will you be rooted, but your leaves will offer nourishment and healing for other people. Yes, even during this really difficult, uncertain time, you can be a healing presence in the lives of others. My brothers and sisters, yeah, the world is a bit chaotic right now, isn't it? Things are uncertain. It's easy to be overwhelmed with fear. We need firmly rooted trees whose leaves serve for healing. Remember who you are. Things may have been taken from you. COVID might have taken a lot from you. This pandemic has brought you to a foreign land. It feels like exile. Don't let it take your prayers your peace, your joy. Remember who you are. Remember who God is. Get back to the practices that keep you rooted, that keep you sober and serene, joyous and free. My brothers and sisters, you do not have to get sucked into every Facebook debate and argument. You do not have to prove that you're right. You do not have to hate the person who sees the world through a different lens than you. And remember, when you get pulled into that sickness of deciding who to hate, God loves all the people you hate. For some of you, it might be time to put right relationship above being right. Love and tolerance, let that be our code. Let that keep us rooted. And by all means, do not let whatever is happening in the world take from the power of human connection. You feel a bit uprooted? If you're stuck in your head and overwhelmed with fear, go look for simple ways to love someone. Reach out to someone, say hello, say have a nice day to people in the grocery store, even when it's awkward, even with the mask on. Find ways to serve others because the way out of your head is to reach out to other people. Remember the phrase, we don't think our way to right action, we act our way to right thinking. Don't give up on human connection. We need it now more than ever. It helps us keep rooted during these times. My brothers and sisters, may you be like those trees transplanted by life-giving streams of water, producing fruit to nourish yourself and others, growing leaves that serve for healing. So here's what we'll do. I invite you to take 60 seconds. Drew will throw the question on the screen. What are some of the practices in your life that keep you rooted? What are the things from keeping you from getting spun out in anger or uncertainty or fear? What keeps you rooted? Share these practices with the community. Let the community in on it because you might have some wisdom to share with them you might be able to just blow their mind a little bit and add to the healing work in the world. So take 60 seconds. What are the practices that keep you rooted?
All right, y'all, I know it was only 60 seconds. You can keep them coming, keep the practices coming. What helps you stay rooted when it feels like you're being completely uprooted? Keep them coming in tonight. We wanna learn from you. We wanna see what keeps you centered and rooted. Now I want to introduce to you my friend and brother, Matt Naraki. Uh, as I said in a Facebook post, I think that was, I don't know, yesterday, the day before? Anyway, he's been a voice of wisdom for me in my journey of sobriety. I'm grateful for his friendship. I'm grateful to, uh, to learn from his experiences, his strength, his hope, his rootedness. So, you know, we've been having some conversation over the last few weeks, Matt and I, some just informal conversations. And last week I said, Matt, the conversation we're having right now, that's what we need to do on Saturday night. We need to let people in on this conversation because if I'm struggling with this stuff, if I've got these questions and he's got some of these questions and he's struggling, I mean, maybe many of us are in the same boat. So let's have this open conversation together about what and how we can stay rooted during these times. So y'all take a moment and just welcome my friend, Matt Naraki. Matt, welcome to the free house, man. Thank you, Thank you for having me, Ryan. I'm glad you're here. Uh, and I should have said this just a minute ago. Uh, I spent some time on Matt's patio this week, and man, I wish we, we had this beautiful conversation. I wish the camera could have been in on that conversation because that's exactly what we were together for maybe an hour, a few minutes more, but we only have a few minutes tonight, 20 or so minutes. Um, but I wish you all could have been there last week and we were just spending some uh, some real and honest time together. That's what I hope happens tonight. So, um, Matt, let's start with this. I want to move from the personal then to the communal, the collective. When it comes to your life, uh, your sobriety, your recovery, I know you've been in recovery for uh, some days now, some years now, for quite a while. But just because we are in recovery and just because we get sober, we put down a drink, it doesn't mean life doesn't still happen. Things still happen. Hard things happen. Um, and so I know you've been through some hard things, uh, recently, not old hard things, but harder things recently, divorce and, you know, COVID and how that affects, how that has effects on your business and, uh, your daughter being in the hospital. And so I think it would be helpful to know, I think they would love to know, I would love to know what are, how do you stay rooted personally when it feels like you've personally been uprooted? Thanks, Ryan. I'm very humbled to be here tonight, and you are a great friend and a, a great uh, a person in my life. And um, so I want to uh, just know that with a grateful heart that we speak together tonight. Um, yeah, I sobered up in 2010, and the world uh, doesn't magically uh, change overnight, and it doesn't become a, a lot of unicorns and butterflies and so on and so forth. Uh, life still happens, and um, I never imagined in sobriety that I would experience uh, uh, the traumatic events of uh, a divorce, uh, it, the suffering that's going on through COVID, and that says, um, for a long time, uh, I built a company, and I had enormous success. Um, we were... Uh, Inc. 5,000 fastest growing companies, multiple times, uh, Colorado companies to watch, a lot of significant awards, uh, had four beautiful children, 20 some year marriage, and then uh, divorce hits, then uh, COVID hits, and then you turn on the TV and you see riots in the streets, and life doesn't look the same anymore. And then you figure out how you can even wake up in the morning and move forward. I don't know if anybody else have felt that way and when significant events mm. start shaping you. But that's how I felt. Like, how do you even wake up in the morning and proceed forward? 
I joined the Fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous in 2010, and it gave me a set of principles to live by, the 12 Steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. And uh, if I incorporate those steps in my daily living, it seemed to provide relief in good times, and I continue to provide, uh, or, or I continue to follow these dictates in my life on a daily basis through the rough times. So when you ask what are the things that you do when you feel uprooted, um, prayer is a very important one. Mm. But I had come through observation to understand in just for me personally that Alcoholics Anonymous to me was about a change in perception, change in perspectives a shift in consciousness, a spiritual awakening. Um, I was looking through a new pair of glasses. I was taught to live with a grateful heart, an attitude of gratitude each and every day, despite all the losses I believe that are external in my life. I have to live with a grateful heart. My mom taught me at an early age uh, a powerful saying that lived inside of me even to this day. She said, I complained I had no shoes till I meant the man with no feet. And that has to do with that change in perspective. Yeah, yeah. And that change in perception. Um, I have to see the blessings in my life, even though I have experienced hardship. For example, I can, I can curse God and say, why am I going through a divorce? And I can have a divorce divorce define me instead of saying I had 20 plus years in a relationship in which I had four beautiful children although the times are hard right now with my ex and my children that I was able to uh, produce the gift of life for my children and provide them a way of life I can reflect on the good in that situation in my company where it's suffering some hardships. I can say at least we have a job when everyone else mm. is suffering. So I can change my perceptions. And I get these changes uh, and, and recognize that perception change is such a huge part of my life is because of the spiritual books I read. Yep. Man's Search for Meaning, Viktor Frankl, talks about that throughout his whole book. Yeah. If you can rearrange the script and you go, hey, instead of this suffering, can you show, find some gratitude in this story? Yeah. And I say, well, I can if I look close enough. And if you continually do that, it comes a little easier each day for me. So would you say it's possible to stay rooted no matter what's happening around yes. you? But I suffer from a, a very, very significant thing that... Um, it took me years to learn, and that is, I am a human. That's what I suffer from, the human condition. The human condition involves the ego, and the ego wants to spend all day in judgment, in condemnation, condemnation of others, condemnation of God. Why did you do this to me? I sit there and battle against that. And the only way I can battle against that is in prayer, in meditation, in trying to help my fellow man. These are the principles I'm taught in Alcoholics Anonymous. Mm. So, uh, Matt, I love it. We could, spend, we could spend a lot more time there on the, on the personal. I want to move a little bit to the communal, too. And you, you and I have had many conversations around this, that when it comes to the current events happening in our world, with everything going on around us, um, and I can't tell you how many people I've talked to just today, at least four people just today who ha have either said it directly or have made some sort of uh, point around it that it feels like we're losing human connection. It feels like I, I, we're just missing that, the human connection piece that we really need. So how do, how do we collectively stay rooted when it feels like we're being uprooted and... and what, what, or, what, what are the things that keep us from being rooted? What are the things that can keep us floating, keep us consumed with all the things that keep us out there somewhere? Well, after listening to Ryan speak tonight um, and the thoughts that Ryan shared with us tonight, I thought 
I don't need to say anything. That's exactly how I felt. It goes back to the conversation we had on my patio um, a, a couple days ago. And then in regards to, there's a lot of condemnation out there today. There's a lot of judgment. There's a lot of egoic minds that act out of fear and out of hatred and out of spite. And these are all the spiritual principles we're told to avoid, or the, the, not the spiritual principles, but the principles we're taught to avoid. Hate, anger, envy, sloth. You know, we go through these things and say this has a significant impact on our hearts. And so today, I can attest to you, Ryan, the following. We sit here talking to each other without a mask right now. We're going to get condemned by 50% of the population. I put on a mask, and I'm going to be, be told that you do not enjoy your freedoms, and you're willing to sacrifice your freedoms for security. I, put a, I don't put on a mask, and they said, you're killing my grandma. And therefore, whatever I do and whatever I say is being judged. And I can tell you that I personally walk around with a great fear. It's not fear of COVID-19. It's the fear of hurting another individual. Mm. I wish not to do it today. I do not wish to offend anyone. I just want to live in peace, peace and serenity. So I, two years ago, I pray every day, God, just give me peace and serenity. That's all I want. And I'm going to be so satisfied with peace and serenity. Then a divorce happens, then COVID happens, then riots in the street, buildings are burning. My business is uh, taking a, a break from uh, uh, the record earnings. And uh, it was almost like God looks upon me and said, uh, how's that peace and serenity today? In which tells me that I better clear away all this external stuff. That I have to clear away that communal judgment and the communal condemnation, no matter what I do, someone will be offended. So I have to only attest to one entity, and that's God. At the end of the day, all I have to do is report to him, and that's the relationship that I have to keep in mind most, and it's hard to do sometimes. Yeah. And I don't like the communities that are fighting and say, hey, I really would like to know where you stand on this subject. And I'm like, yeah. no, you don't. You just want to judge. You're waiting. Very few people are saying, I want to know because I want to be able to maybe change my heart or understand you and put my feet. I want to put my feet in your shoes. It doesn't happen a lot. They're waiting for me to answer so they can directly, like you said, um, get irate. And um, a lot of the spiritual teachers that came into my life in the books that I read said that a lot of discussions that take place, like from me and you, they said it never advances because I do the following. If you tell me something, whether it's a face mask and no face mask, I'm either going to go, uh, if, you, uh, if I agree with you from my set of beliefs, I'll go, yeah, that's right, Ryan. That's right. You are right, and you are a smart man. And if you say something opposite me, I will condemn you and say, you know what? I'm taking you off of Facebook. I'm unfriending you, and yeah. you are no longer going to be in my life because you have offended. And I said today's culture is called the offended generation. We spend all day offended by something and someone. That's what we do. We walk around. So as far as the community goes, um, we have to get back to internal spiritual values. And I think uh, a culture that doesn't look inside. Do you, I think there's a big uproot right now because externally things are being taken from all of us. Jobs, families, isolation, community, smiling at each other, connecting with one another. And guess what we're left with? We're left with us. I have to be left by myself in my internal things. And if my internal things are driven by fear and mm -hmm. anger, 
Ryan, I would look at you today and say, you know what? I am angry with what's going on in this city right now. I'm angry what's going on in this country. I'm angry that people are so scared of COVID and they keep making comments. And I'd say, here, take these glasses and put them on and now look how you see the world through my eyes of anger, of hatred, of irateness. And you'd say, here, have your glasses back <laughs> um, because this isn't looking good. Yeah. So when you say we have to get rooted that's exactly what I, I would like to do because I don't want to give the world these glasses when I wake up with anger and condemnation and judgment. Take the glasses and say, give me a new pair to yep. look through. Man, thanks for that, Matt. And, you know, another thing we were talking about on your porch is um, I, I brought up to Matt that, um, you know, as a leader, I'm frequently asked by people, urged by people, hey, you need to speak up on this. Hey, and it doesn't matter what the this is. There's always issues and things happening in the world, things that divide people. You need to speak up on this. And, and a phrase that I've heard uh, um, frequently used by some people, if you want to put on shame on someone, you say, well, silence is violence. Silence is violence. Yeah. And what I've learned in my sobriety, pre-sobriety, that stuff would get me in, in a lot of trouble because I wanted to be right. And I wanted to convince you that I was right. And so I wasn't silent about, uh, I wasn't silent about anything, man. I let you know, and my opinion is important and you need to hear me out. Ego driven. And in sobriety, what I've learned is, no, I don't have to have an opinion on everything. I dang sure don't have to have a public opinion on everything. But I'll be honest with y'all, I'll be honest, Matt knows this, I shared this with Matt. As a leader, I struggle with that. When are the times we, we speak up and when are the times where we say, no, 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 I'm going to be silent here because my sobriety is important. And if that's not put first, then I'm of no help to anybody. And so, Matt, I just want to ask you as your leader, you're clearly a leader. Uh, it's your charisma, your, your leader in your company, your CEO, you started your company. Um, for leaders seeking to stay rooted in a really loud world. What do you say to them? Um, this is another question that we talked about in depth the other day, Ryan and I. And uh, this question that he's addressing right now is important to both him and I because um, we both readily admitted that we don't always have the answer. Um, I said something uh, to Ryan the other day that was very, very sincere. And I said, when I walked into recovery in 2010, I ceased fighting everything and everyone. I was a guy that grew up in his teenage years very angry and very bitter. And I spent the majority of that time fighting with people and making arguments, trying to say I'm right. And when I stopped the getting, I got out of the argument business, I got out of the debate society and I think that's when I started becoming a leader, when my opinions were kept to myself. And I just, there, there's a passage that I live by in my head that says, preach the gospel all your life. If necessary, use words. Mm. Now, a lot of people, uh, you need to sit with that. And they're saying, words isn't what we're looking for. I'm watching your actions. Yeah. yeah. And so when they put upon us, Matt, you've got to say something as the CEO of this company. You've got to say something. You're the pastor of this church. Most of the people that are waiting to hear from you is not to shape new ideas. It's waiting to say, I'm either going to condemn you or I'm going to applaud you, yep. depending on the answer you're going to get. So I think most of us humans are in the business of judgment. I really don't say, you know what? LeBron James is a leader. I better go on his Facebook page tonight to see what he has to say on this particular subject. Because if I do, I would attest to you that I'm going to go, no, that's not right. He's a jerk, and I'm no longer watching basketball. Or, man, he agrees with me. That man is brilliant. And so as a leader, if I was to attest to you, Ryan, as a leader, the reason that 
I'm called a leader today is because I got out of the business of stating public opinions. I got out of the business of always having to tell people what I thought. And somehow it resonated with people. And they brought me up to be in a leadership role. If I was to tell them today, I don't speak out because I'm in the business of staying sober. That's my primary purpose today is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And I'm out of the game. There's a, there's a passage in the book of Alcoholics Anonymous that says, shoemaker, stick to thy last. A last is that wooden shoe mm. that they put to mold a shoe. And if you know the story behind shoemaker, stick to thy last, it was an artist who drew a picture. And one day a shoemaker went and took a look at this picture and said, the shoe's crooked. I'm a shoemaker. And so the painter went back and fixed that. And then the next day, the painter said, hey, his hip is a little off. And he said, shoemaker, stick to thy last. Mm, <laughs> and, that's good. And we're not experts at everything. Yeah. You're yep. in the business of healing souls. I don't know if I need to know your opinion about uh, the Major League Baseball today or whatever. You're in, the opinion, you're in the business of love thy neighbor as thyself. And if that says, that's all I want to do is the golden rule. Thanks, Matt. You, you see why this conversation is so multi-layered. And, and again, I'd be lying to y'all if I just said, yeah, I don't wrestle with this stuff at all. I know exactly when to use my voice and when not to use my voice. And, uh, and Tina, I love what you said. You said, um, I'm scrolling up, but um, uh, sobriety has taught me that my voice matters. And, and I think I learned that same thing in sobriety. And it, it taught me that my voice is even, it matters even more. So how I use it is is really important and I love what you said Matt the quote I forget which theologian said it but um, preach at all times use words when necessary how I live really matters how I love people really matters um, you know I, I heard in, in recovery a long time ago that people people don't always care what I think but they care about how I live they care about how I treat other people um, and again guys if, if this were an easy conversation if the answers were easy here we wouldn't need to have this conversation. I mean, why talk about the easy stuff? Why talk about the stuff we have nailed? We talk about the stuff that we struggle with. And I, I don't know, I have to think uh, many of you are in the same boat. You're wondering, what does it look like to engage here? Again, what does it look like to stay rooted when things are being uprooted, when you yourself feel uprooted? Thank you so much, so much Matt, for being with us tonight. We'll, we're going to have you back because this conversation is too good. Um, so thank you, man. I value your voice. Thank you for sharing with us your wisdom. I think some people That's might have questions some questions and comments for you. So if you want to engage people on Facebook, you can't. You, can't. you ought to start, start a debate and an argument on Facebook. Well, <laughs> you know, if you were to go to my Facebook page, you would be hard pressed to find out whether I am for mask or not for mask, whether I'm Republican or Democrat. I'm not in the business of of sharing these opinions with anybody because it will provoke anger and with half of them and all I get from the other half is thumbs up because they agree with me and it's I'm not in the business of needing applause or accolades or I am sure trying to avoid condemnation and anger today yeah <laughs> all right brother appreciate you being here we are going to transition out of this time uh, into uh, heartaches because, because it's, it's how we, we Close things Close in this community. We do celebrations. That's how we open. And then we have heartaches. We, uh, we take our burdens, the heavy things we're carrying, the things that are tearing us apart. Uh, we take those things and we lift them up to God. We lift them up as a community together. There's a prayer team here at Free. Um, we pray for you all throughout the week. I say it every week. Jason leads his team. He keeps us organized and praying and reaching out to y'all. So take two minutes. Get vulnerable. Let people in on the places you're struggling, the burdens you're carrying, because we want to carry these burdens with you, do it together as community. So put them in the comments. I know sometimes it can feel awkward. You're letting people in. That's part of vulnerability. So put it in the comments. You got two minutes and then we'll come back together.
All right. Welcome back, everybody. There's some hard um, stuff I'm reading. Man, through. I didn't even get that. I was up getting more coffee. I actually got this much coffee and then this much water because I drink too much coffee on Saturday nights and I don't sleep. Yeah, that's true. You want to take the first one? Sure. Alexis A. And I lost my dad and had to end my relationship with my mother for now due to abuse. And it has caused nightmares and a struggle with sobriety. So sorry to hear that. Some tough stuff. Yeah, prayers for you, Alexis. Tina says, uh, good to see you here tonight, Tina. Hey, Tina. I mean, you're here most nights, but it's good to see you tonight. <laughs> My aunt's health went downhill a couple of weeks ago. Turns out it's cancer that metastasized. Metas that word I can never say, metastasized. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Tina disappeared, metastasized in various parts of her body. She just went on hospice. Her name is Patricia. Thank you for your prayers. Also, also pray for my fam. They don't do feelings, grief, etc. Prayers for your aunt and your whole family and you, Tina. Thank you for sharing that with us, lifting her in prayer. Uh, yeah, from Cindy. Lisa's continued health. Chocolate Lisa, yeah. for sure. Kat says, prayers for the sick, suffering and loss, that they may turn and find God while there's still time. All right, we're going to lift up the sick, the suffering, and the loss. Thank you for that, Kat. From MJ, prayers for our homeless brothers and sisters, that they, that they're all serving them downtown. They stay safe. Yes. Yeah. We'll be praying for them. Thanks, MJ. I know there's a lot happening. Um, Alexis has another one. I lost my dad and had to end my relationship with my mother for now due to abuse, and it has caused nightmares. Right. We had that one. And a struggle. Oh yeah, we just did that one. So no, that's all right. No that's all right. We're gonna lift that one up twice. Two it's times. an important one. <laughs> Chris, struggling to maintain serenity and emotional sobriety like no other time. Yeah, Chris, I, I, I know that you aren't alone. We we hear from uh, many people often throughout the week. So uh, you're in good company in this community. Uh, we got your back. Reach out to us, and we'll support you through it. Yeah, man. Prayers for you, Chris. Mm -hmm. um, Debbie said, I lost my dad this morning. I'm glad his pain has ended, but we'll miss him terribly. Yeah. So sorry for your loss, Debbie. Thank you for sharing that with this community. Prayers for you. Absolutely. Sorry, Debbie. Lance uh, lost a dear, dear friend, Bob, this week. After his year and a half struggle with pancreatic cancer, I wish I had a fraction of the faith he developed. Prayers for his family for healing. I know he was a dear friend for you. Yeah, I got to spend time with that friend in, in um, Guatemala a few years back. So yeah. some sacred memories. Yeah. Teresa says... Um, Please pray for my nephew. Hard times. All right, Teresa, we don't know what's going on, but lifting up your nephew in prayers. Thank you for sharing. Hey, Pam, pray for my son. There are more eyeballs looking for him now. We'll continue to pray for Sam. And Debbie says, continued prayers for four-year-old Lennon Cash still fighting cancer. Yeah. And we know Debbie's lifted little Lennon up for, I think, many months, months now, many weeks, yep. many months. And so continued prayers for Lennon. Hey, Mark, he says, my wife and I have separated, letting go and letting God. Hey, thanks for sharing that with us. Yeah, prayers for you, Mark. Y'all may remember Mark was one of our storytellers, man, I don't know, at the beginning of COVID era. Yep. yep. Uh, so prayers for you, Mark. I know it's difficult times. One more? Yep. And from Cindy, prayers for those struggling with the disease of addiction. Thank you, Cindy. Usually Jamie lifts up those struggling. So thank yep. you for for taking that from uh, Jamie's plate tonight. Yeah, we're going to lift them all up. Prayers for everyone still struggling. Yep. And um, I'm going to exit your shot and let you take Yeah, you can. You can okay. Thank you for being with me. Um, Y'all know, speaking of those still struggling. Um, you know, one of the... Uh, I say this every week, but I got to say it again. One of the central images in this community is a wagon. And I won't tell the whole story of the wagon tonight. Uh, maybe Lou will get online and tell you the story of the wagon later. Uh, but you know, the wagon is a central image in this community. It has been from day one. And it's really simple. If you fall off the wagon of life in this community, we do not do shame. We don't kick the wounded. We welcome you back on. We want to journey together with you because we know where we're headed, a place of recovery, of, of healing, a place of spiritual connection. We want to do that stuff together because we suck at doing it alone. You are welcome to get back on the wagon, stay on the wagon because we're headed somewhere. On the wagon, if you've ever been to Free, the physical premises here at Free, you know that there's a donation box that sits on the wagon. 
Um, and truly, y'all, I tell you this, uh, it's your generous giving that keeps this community going, that keeps us thriving. And with everything new that's happening, and there's so much exciting stuff happening, even in the midst of COVID. I mean, God's doing some amazing things here. and We get to be a part of it. Um, it's your generous giving that keeps things going. So we truly appreciate it. It means the world to us in this community. There are three safe and easy ways to give. The first way is to simply download the app, go to the app, and you can give either weekly, monthly, bi-monthly, however you want to do it, or one time. Second way is to go to the website, freespiritualcommunity.com, and you can give there, or you can text be the wagon to the number on your screen, and it's easy. It'll send you some directions, super easy. Send a text, do it that way, however you want to do it. Um, your generous giving keeps us going, keeps us growing. We're so glad to be on this journey with all of you. We love y'all. We still miss y'all. We're trying to find new ways to connect. You're going to be hearing more about that in the in next week. I told y'all earlier we're having meetings about that, um, gathering with the home team tomorrow. So uh, how about you find a quiet place, maybe even open your palms. It's a sign of openness. You're open to spirit moving in your midst moving in the interiors, moving all around you. And let's say this prayer together. Many of you know it, it's called the serenity prayer. If you don't know it, it's on your screen and it goes like this. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can and wisdom to know the difference, amen. My brothers and sisters, may you be like those trees transplanted by life-giving streams of water. May you produce leaves of healing, leaves of nourishment for yourself and for others. Go out into the world starting tonight and go love people. Go be kind to people. Show compassion to people. We need it. The world needs it. We'll see y'all soon. Love y'all. Peace out. So much grace and peace. All right. Thank you all for being here. Thank you.